Sejong University in Korea. So today I'd like to uh, introduce the StarCraft AI uh, development and the uh, result of this year competition. So StarCraft is maybe the one of the most difficult uh, video game. And recently people think that this game will be the next target for uh, benchmarking games. Uh, after the great success of the AlphaGo. And however, the state of the art AIs, for example, the last year winner, still, uh, in my opinion, and some research paper say that the level is novice human player. So still, there are big gap between AI player and the human professional players. So, there are three AI competitions, the AID version and CIG and SSCAIT. And actually recently, a week ago, the Blizzard and DeepMind uh, released the new version StarCraft 2 API. This is an official API, so you can develop the StarCraft 2 API, uh, AI program uh, using the uh, API and their machine learning tool. So I think that this will be a very big event to the real-time strategy AI society. So there should be many change from uh, in the next year, maybe I expect. And competition setup of this year, uh, we use the StarCraft 1, not 2, but just one brood war. And actually participants use the BW API and they make their AI using the C++ or Java or Proxybot. And actually our competition is AI versus AI match. So based on the win ratio, we determine the winner. And we use five randomly selected maps. And in total, we uh, have about 50,000 uh, matches. And it takes about two weeks using 22 machines. And finally, we follow the open source policy, so you can uh, access all the source code of AI boards after this competition. And the number of submission actually is increasing. So in this year, we have 20 submissions. And there are five new submissions. New submission means that uh, this is totally new. So uh, the first time in the AI competition, and we have seven upgraded versions. So they, uh, they already submitted in the last year, but they upgrade uh, in this year competition. And we have eight, eight submissions without any change of the last year AI entries. So in total, 20 AI players from 13 countries. And the race, uh, in the early days, the Protoss race is very powerful, but nowadays, the Terran and Jog, uh, they are stronger than the Protoss. And in this year, the AI player is equally distributed, 30%, 30%, 30%. And two AI, 10% is a random AI. So the AI has all the race, Terran, Protoss, and Jog. So uh, it's quite complex one. And we select five maps randomly. So we don't know which map will be used in the competition until the last moment. So it's hidden to the participant. And the total number of games is uh, nearly 50,000. It's three times more than the last year. And actually we provide some file IO so players can store, save all the experience in the competition, then you can adapt to your opponent to uh, some maps and change the strategy. So let me introduce some uh, uh, basic details of the, some AI boards. The Purple Wave, uh, this is a new AI and it's from United States and this is a proxy board. Uh, they use the Scala programming language and actually they use uh, uh, HTN, the hierarchical task network to give some priority on the task in the StarCraft. And they apply the hybrid squad and multi-agent approach. So each unit has its own goal. 
but sometimes they collaborate if they are in the same squad. And the Kashia board, this is also a new board from China. And this is, in my opinion, this is the first time that deep learning uh, is applied to the full game StarCraft AI. So they mentioned that deep learning was applied to the uh, strategy selection. But still, there is no papers or any details, but you can analyze the source code after this competition. And they use the supervised learning and reinforcement learning for, to train. And Retabot, the key factor is the text mining. So they ex extract the uh, professional players' uh, opening strategy from the Wikipedia, the eSports Wikipedia. So they uh, collect some build all the information from those websites. And the mega board is quite interesting one. Actually, they uh, combine the uh, Skynet, Zellaga, and NUS board. This is a meta AI. So they use uh, all the previous AI, very successful AI players, and they train the Q-running uh, to know the value of each AI given the context. Context means that the map and opponent, which AI is good or bad. So in that way, they can train how to select the AI. And also they apply, they apply the same idea to the fighting game AI competition. You can make the meta AI uh, using the, some previous entries. Uh, let me uh, announce the result. So third rank is the Purple Wave. This is a new entry, but uh, very good at in this year competition. And win ratio is 66%. And the second rank is a TSCMO. Uh, this guy uh, adopt a random race strategy. And actually, win ratio is very high, 73%. It's very close to the winner, very small difference with the best player and the second ranker. And the winner is the GGGK board. So the win ratio is 75, and this guy uh, adopt very early attack strategy. So do you know the hopeful build order? Maybe this is all or nothing strategy, very risky strategy, but it's very successful in uh, AI competition. So although Everybody knows that this guy used this strategy, but it's quite difficult to defend this very risky strategy. So uh, it's working, and congratulations, Digital Keyboard by Chris Cox. And the uh, uh, ranking of other AI players is as follows. And because we follow the open source policy, you can download all the source code of AI players, and we uh, opened the all the replays, maybe 50,000 replays between AI player matches. So you can download the replay files. And uh, I have one issue about uh, this competition setting. For example, um, we uh, repeat the competition for 125 rounds. Uh, as you can see, the best AIs in the early stage very high win number, but in the last stage, it's getting down. It means that other AI adapt to the, the two AI players. However, there are very strong adaptive AI players. They learn during the game playing. So for example, in the early round, very low performance, but in the last, uh, for example, the, after the 120 uh, rounds, they make win against most of the AI players. So very strong in the last stage. So it means that if you continue this competition after the 125, for, for example, 200 rounds or 300 rounds, if you can do, then maybe the competition ranking may be very different. But we don't have time and resource to continue. For example, two weeks, 125 rounds one month, <laughs> so it's not easy to continue this competition, but actually uh, there are some, it means that we need 
one, more than 100 matches against the opponent to adapt to your opponent. It's very long time to adapt. So there are some issues to make the ranking of the AI players. So let me show you video clips uh, of this year competition AI players. The top three purple wave, this is a newcomer with a HTM. So you can see that very strange uh, situation. You can see that. So this is a very uncommon event. That in human match, maybe this is not common. We do not use a walker to attack the front area. But you can see that they collaborate very well. And the second rank is PSTMO. So this guy is good at the adaptation. So this is a very early attack and they adapt. His strategy is the best to this uh, one and they are ready to uh, block this big uh, attack. And as you can see the uh, positioning of the unit is very good in this player. And this is the cable, uh, they are the best in the early stage, early attack. So we tested the DG cable against human players. So if you do not know the strategy of the AI, sometimes human players lose the game because this is very cheap strategy. And the Diablo, uh, this, this AI player has human-like control of the mutile. The last uh, is the Retabot. Retabot uh, shows very good skills to manage large number of uh, units. So this is a deep combat. So they are very good at keep the tank. But the main issue is that the current uh, AI player is not strong to human. So in my opinion, it's uh, some novice right there. So because the competition is just based on the AI versus AI competition. So they ignore many things. Just uh, sometimes human is very strong scouting and some, uh, some uh, high level build order strategy, but they ignore because AI players cannot do that, so just simple strategy. Anyway, uh, we need to improve the StarCraft AI against human. How can you do that? Is uh, We uh, plan to organize special event between the best AI versus human professional player. Uh, in this uh, October, we will uh, organize a special event. And actually, we need to improve the AI play player against human. And the second issue is the StarCraft 2. 
so uh, I didn't make decision yet, but uh, in the next, next, next year, do we have the two tracks, for example, StarCraft 1 AI competition and StarCraft 2 AI competition, or we just uh, focus on the single track? I don't know, but we will test uh, some uh, time which one is the best for the development of the StarCraft AI. Okay, that's some future issue we need to think about. And I'd like to create thanks to Dave Churchill and uh, SSCIT organizers. Uh, thank you. Actually, uh, the AI had many strategies. So for example, strategy A, B, C, D, E, F. Then uh, you try one by one uh, in the 100 rounds. They try many strategies given different map, different opponents, and you score the result, win or some success or failure. Then you can uh, try to find which one is the best given the opponent. Yeah, then you maybe increase the win ratio. You uh, select the right strategy given the right time. So, but it takes very long time to adapt to your opponent. So it's a big problem. How can you uh, make sure to for the adaptation? Ah, before the competition, because you don't know what kind of strategy uh, will be used by your opponent. Ah, oh, right. So, yeah, but actually, <laughs> but you don't know. The fixed player will be uh, with, with no change or change because uh, it's, you can, uh, you can uh, inform until the last, after the registration, you can uh, inform that this guy without change, this guy has uh, some improvement. So it is not possible to predict, so perfectly prepare the, all the um, pre-learning. Ah, yes, it's possible, but this is a very sensitive issue that if you change the rule, maybe, uh, we need some big discussion with the participants. Anyway, it's possible that uh, if you think about the this part, the longer part with the time, will maybe can be acquired. But still, most, uh, all the three AI competitions just based on the average win ratio over the long uh, running time. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I, I forgot mentioning that if you are participants of whatever competitions, please come to me. I need to check who are presented in, who are present here, okay, for prize or whatever. Okay, so the next uh, competition is Visual Zoom AI competition. Uh, it will be presented by Marek Gipnu. There are two tracks.
Hello, my name is Marek Widmuch uh, and I'm very excited to present you today results of this year uh, Visual Doom AI competition, uh, which was organized also by uh, Wojciech Jaskowski and Michał Kętka. Uh, but before I announce uh, the winners, I would like to briefly introduce you uh, to the competition itself and uh, our platform. So our participants uh, were forced uh, to use this Zoom, uh, 3D reinforcement learning uh, environment built on top of legendary game Doom. Uh, uh, and uh, it was developed at Poznan University of Technology. Uh, it's multi-platform uh, environment with uh, API for uh, some of the most popular languages. It's fast, lightweight, uh, give you access to deep buffers, uh, it's uh, labels object visible uh, in a frame for you automatically. Uh, it also renders you top down map of uh, episode, uh, support single player, multiplayer, cooperation, uh, mode uh, in synchronous and asynchronous mode. Uh, it also uh, has spectator mode for learning from demonstration uh, and uh, okay it also incorporates all the goods uh, created by the community that uh, has gathered around doom uh, so um, this means that uh, mature tools uh, for creating uh, uh, new scenarios are available uh, and also you can use a powerful speaking language that has documentation. Uh, so well, all these things uh, could be used by the participants to create uh, their agent for the competition uh, and I hope they enjoy working with it. Okay so let's get to competition. Uh, it's, it has pretty simple rules, only visual input with some added information like HP and ammo, uh, one PC per agent, uh, death match, uh, 10 matches uh, every 10 minutes long, uh, 10 seconds to respawn after death, uh, and the guy with the most frags wins. So it's basically a LAN party for AIs. Uh, and there were two separate tracks. Mm. The first one. Uh, eight agents made, made it to the final. Uh, we added also the last year's winner as a baseline. Uh, one known map, only rocket launchers and uh, limited number of items available on the map. Uh, and okay, so it's time to announce the winners. Axon, the first place. The runner up is Arnold 2 by the Terminators with uh, 245 tracks. And the winner is Marvin with only Three more tracks, and uh, I would like you to show you now, uh, now uh, uh, multi kills performed by them, and what I actually going to show you not a video, but.
but recreation of uh, these moments in game. I need this option, sorry. So. Uh, let's watch Arnold. Now, let's hear from Mark. So congratulations, and let me see the second track, uh, it was a bit different, uh, 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 it got only six submissions, uh, and uh, in this track uh, agents play on different maps uh, that are unknown, and uh, basically agents were allowed allowed to use uh, everything they found and pick it up and so interact the last year winner uh, the first place the runner-up is Yanshi by uh, I believe it's acronym so it's E S A I L uh, with 273 frags and again the winner uh, and the winner is Arnold 4, again by the Terminators, with only two more frags. Uh, congratulations, and again, I would like to show some, oh, sorry, some action. Yeah, 
I'd like to mirror the screen again. Sorry for that, I checked it before and it works great. And so. I'm running out of time, so uh, I would like to. Uh, uh, so, 
thank you all the participants for uh, for taking part. Uh, I'm amazed uh, how generally level of uh, competition rise uh, in only one year. And uh, well, we are looking uh, forward for the next uh, edition. Uh, we are also looking for the prize sponsor. Uh, if you know someone uh, or some organization that would like to sponsor uh, prizes, I think the best person to contact is Wojciech Kaskowski. Thank you. Yeah, of so, so the participants could choose uh, a color for the agent and uh, okay, the favorite color was brown. <laughs> Yeah, we thought about it, but we decided to keep it uh, the year before uh, to compare it with uh, baseline agents. Probably in next year we will change uh, the formula a bit. Yeah. Well, it's pretty common for agents uh, trained with uh, DQN method that they get a Parkinson, basically. <laughs> no, not really. Um, no. Uh, this year, rather, uh, the most common approach was A2C method. Uh, asynchronous, uh, um, uh, asynchronous advantage actor critic method. It's developed by uh, DeepMind. Yeah. Uh, the winners. And also the last year, uh, winners used that method. Thank you very much. Thank you for your questions. Well, okay, I, I must to say I'm not 100% uh, sure because uh, we didn't really check to re uh, code for all the participants. So I'm not sure if the winners of this year edition use A2C. Just for clarity. Okay, so the next competition is micro RTS AI competition organized by Santiago on Tanon. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't attend today, so I will be using his uh, video clip uh, to present instead. But the sound is very, very low, so so please be silent.
be back in like two minutes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Santiago Antañón, and I'm going to present to you the results of the MicroRTS uh, 2017 competition. First of all, before I start, apologies for not being able to be there. Uh, so I prepared this video. Hopefully, it can compensate for uh, my absence there. So before or, uh, I start my with the results, there. let me. So before I start with the results, let me first introduce so what is MicroRTS. Micro is an open source so MicroRTS is an open source minimalistic implementation of a real-time strategy Java. game. And, it uh, is implemented it is in Java, and uh, it is basically designed RTS. for so doing research in RTS. So the main idea is that trying to when create AI for trying to create RTS AI for like full-fledged RTS, full RTS games like StarCraft, uh, we have to deal with a lot of problems engineering uh, that are problems not that are key to the actually to not so key to the, the goal with creating micro RTS. Is can we create the simplest instantiation of an RTS game that we can think of that still keeps the properties of a full-fledged RTS game, right? It's still as complex to play micro RTS as it is to play a game like StarCraft. Uh, one of the advantages of micro RTS as well for research is that it comes built in with a collection of state-of-the-art AI techniques. So if you build your bot, you can already test it immediately against techniques like Monte Carlo research or portfolio research or many other techniques from the literature, right? So it is research-oriented. It is built in Java, so it's cross-platform. You don't have to build your AI in Java. There's uh, a lot of uh, functionalities for building your AI in other languages and communicate via sockets, all these kind of things. You can also configure the game to be deterministic, non-deterministic, op fully observable, partially observable. You can play maps, uh, games in tiny maps of like four by four tiles or very large maps, uh, as large as the StarCraft maps, etc. So. Here on the right side, I show a screenshot of MicroRTS, but for those of you that have never seen the game, I have a little video that shows uh, some two bots playing against each other just so that you have an idea of what the game looks like. So here in the middle, we have a barrier of resources. And in this game, there's uh, the, one AI is in the left, the other AI is in the right. Uh, they are controlling these units, which are the circles. The small circles are workers that can gather resources and bring them back to the base, which is the white squares. Uh, the yellow units are melee units that can actually that are, are, are much stronger than workers. Uh, so basically, as in any as, as in any RTS game, uh, AIs in micro RTS have to gather resources that to build units and then send them to attack. Right. Uh, so that's basically uh, the game. So there's very few unit types because the game is very minimalistic. So you can build bases that can produce workers. You can build barracks that can produce melee units or ranged units. Uh, workers can gather resources, and uh, melee units and range units can attack. And there's only one type of resource. Maps can be of arbitrary size, and you can also set walls if you can if you want to set up like uh, more complicated layouts for the maps. They don't need to be uh, just squares. So that is micro RTS. Uh, so why do we want to create a micro RTS competition? As I was saying before, there's many other RTS platforms out there like StarCraft. But uh, some of those is actually are very. It is very complicated to create an AI for it, right? So, so if you guys have students and have tried to participate in a, in in some of these competitions, you see that it takes a while to set up uh, an AI to play these games. And uh, I know Dave Churchill has done a lot of work into making uh, building a bot for StarCraft much easier, and he's done a great job on that. And it's actually much much easier than before. But there's still a lot of engineering burden. So MicroRTS allows us to focus on the basic underlying research problems without having to worry about the details, right? And the other thing is that if you look at the StarCraft competition, 
uh, we see that hard-coded bots still dominate the competition. That might be that that might indicate that maybe st games like StarCraft are still too hard for state-of-the-art AI techniques. So MicroRTS can provide this middle ground where we can test AI techniques until they are mature, and then once we know they work and we've figured out all the theoretical details, then we can translate them to StarCraft. Right? Just to uh, emphasize again the point of how easy it is to build an AI for a MicroRTS, so this is the full source code of a bot in MicroRTS. This bot just plays random uh, action, so it just selects an action at random at every uh, cycle. But this is the full source code of a potential entry for the competition, right? So it is actually very, very easy to build an AI for MicroRTS. So, so the competition. So there were three tracks in the competition, the standard track, the non-deterministic track, and the partial observability track. So the standard track was set up to be fully observable and deterministic, and the other tracks had obviously non-determinism non -determinism and partial observability. So there was fog of war and units had a limited side range. Uh, every track was run as a round robin tournament. So all the AIs played, played against each other. And uh, they played against each other in eight different maps. So we ran fi five full rounds of this round robin tournament. So since there's eight maps, so there was actually 40 full round robin uh, tournaments run. Uh, for each track. Uh, all games were two player and every AI was given 10, uh, 100 milliseconds per game frame to decide the move. If games went beyond a predefined uh, game length, then they were considered tied. And of course, all the uh, competition entries were asked to be open source, so entrants must release the source code for future competitions so that then uh, performance can be compared against future bots. As I was saying, there's eight maps. Uh, out of the eight maps, four of them were made public before the competition, which are these four. Uh, the four public maps were a, a very tiny 8x8 eight eight map, then a slightly larger 16x16 16 16 map, some 24x24 map, where the resources were a little, bit, a little bit far from the base, which is a little bit unusual, so bots had to work extra uh, there to figure out what to do. And then a much larger 64x64 uh, 64 64 map, which was basically translated automatically by Nicolas Barriga from the University of Alberta uh, from a StarCraft map. There was also four hidden maps that uh, participants didn't know which maps uh, were the hidden ones. And these ones represented a little bit more like odd situations. So I selected maps that were not typical. Uh, the first one was a map where every player starts with four bases and four workers. So that's a little bit unusual. The in the second one, players already started with barracks. So they can start building melee units right away. The third map had a wall of resources in the middle. So before players can actually uh, fight with each other, they actually had to dig a tunnel through this wall so that they can reach each other. And the last game actually had a wall in the middle, and there's two parallel games going on. So the AIs had to actually play two games in parallel and win both in order to win this game. We used eight bots for this competition. Uh, the first four were baseline bots that were included just uh, as a reference. The first was a random bot that just picks action stochastically. The next two, Worker Rush and Light Rush, were are just hard-coded bots that implement hard-coded strategies. The fourth is Naive MCTS, which is a state-of-the-art Monte Carlo research <coughs> sorry, algorithm. Uh, the next three are the three competition entrants. So there are three teams participated in, participating in the competition this year. The first is from Drexel University in the US, second from the University of Alberta in Canada, and the last from Universidad de Federal de Vizosa in Brazil. <coughs> and uh, I included by accident an additional bot, Puppet Search, which was not meant to be used for the competition, but I included it uh, by mistake, so I kept the results there. So out of the three bots, the first the three competition entrants proper, the first is B BS3 Naive MCTS from Drexel University, which is an extension of Naive MCTS uh, to handle partial observability. It, it The bot uh, includes belief state generation so that it actually guesses where the units of the opponent are, and then with that, it can use Monte Carlo research. Uh, the second one is Strategy Tactics from the University of Alberta. And uh, Strategy Tactics integrates uh, Puppet Search, which is a technique for high-level planning in uh, real-time strategy games, with Naive MCTS that can be used for low-level tactics for controlling the units at a very low level. So uh, the CPU time is shared against these two techniques. And uh, Puppet Search basically dictates the overall strategy, and Naive MCTS is used to control individual units when there's a battle, and then overrides uh, the actions that Puppet Search decided. The last bot is PV 
AIMLED, which this bot contains a collection of scripts that can control the units, and those scripts vote for which actions uh, each unit will perform. And what they did is they use machine learning for adapting for learning which scripts work well against different opponents. So when the game is being played, machine learning is used to determine the subset of scripts to use, and then those would vote for which actions the unit will perform. So these are the three entries, and these are the results. So for the standard track, we used all eight bots. And here I show a win ratio over time. So on the horizontal axis, we have each one of the 40 rounds of the tournament. Remember, there was eight maps, and we repeated the whole tournament five times. So eight times five is 40, all the 40 rounds uh, of the tournament. And in the vertical axis, we have win ratio. So uh, what we see is that the bot that performed the best of all is Strategy Tactics by University of Alberta, which performs slightly better than one of the hard-coded bots, a light rush PO. Then most of the other bots were in the middle. We have we see this uh, a middle pack here. Uh, the best of the rest is naive and CTS, and then all the other bots perform slightly worse than that. And then, as expected, uh, the random bot that was included that there just for reference performed the worst of all. Right? We see there at the bottom. So to understand a little bit better why the performance of the bots is like this is, we did a little bit more uh, analysis. And here, what I'm showing is the average win ratios uh, for all the maps in the left-hand side, only for those open maps, like the four, first four maps that were uh, known beforehand in the middle. And on the right-hand side, the performance of the bots win ratios on the hidden maps, those maps that were not uh, known beforehand. We can see that the performance of the bots changes drastically uh, from one set of maps to the others. That is because the open maps, the public ones, were kind of standard maps, right? There are maps that capture prototypical situations. All bots start with one base, one worker, whereas the hidden maps have basically odd starting positions. So as expected, what we see is that Monte Carlo research-based bots, like uh, in this case, uh, the yellow one, blue line in the middle, perform not as good as the scripted strategies in the open maps that were standard, but perform very, very well in the hidden maps where the scripts actually do not work very well. And what we see is that strategy tactics, the, the bot that performed the best, won the competition because even if it did not perform the best in either the open or the hidden maps, it performs very well in both, right? So it, it showed to be very robust. So that's why it actually won the competition. So in the second track, the non-deterministic track, uh, only seven bots participated because the BS3 and IFMCTS bot cannot handle non-determinism. So only strategy tactics and PVA and MLED were the proper entrants of this uh, competition. And these are the results. Again, strategy tactics performed the best, uh, slightly ahead of Light Rush PO. This time we see that the performance gap between these two strategies, these two bots and the other ones is not as big. And also we see that in the standard competition, Naive and CTS, the Monte Carlo Research bot was leading the rest, in this case, it performs the worst, the worst, and that is because it cannot handle non-determinism. And again, random bias bot performed the, the worst. When we analyze the results by map type, we see similar as before. Uh, the scripted uh, bots perform very well in the open maps, not as well in the hidden maps. Uh, Monte Carlo Research performs uh, very, very well in the hidden maps, very poorly in the open maps, and strategy tactics won the competition because it performed very, very uh, strongly in both type of apps. So it is actually a very robust strategy. Finally, the last leg, the last track of the competition, the partial observability track, only one bot supported partial observability, which is VS3 uh, Naive and CTS. So it was run against uh, the other four baseline bots. And what we see in this case is that the two hard-coded bots, Light Rush and Worker Rush, perform much better than any other bot in this competition. And even if naive BS3 naive MCTS perform better than naive MCTS, uh, thanks to being able to handle partial observability, it's still not uh, at the level of right rush and worker rush uh, in all eight maps. And as before, we see that uh, the naive MCTS, the, the Monte Carlo research bots, uh, the yellow and dark blue line here, perform a bit better in the hidden maps, but still not at the level of the hard coded strategies. So. In partial observability settings, we see that Monte Carlo research still it performs much worse than scripted bots. Whereas in the full observability settings, we saw that Monte Carlo research could outperform the scripted bots in the hidden maps. It's not the case in partial observability uh, in partial in the setting with partial observability.
So in conclusion, we see that hard-coded bots perform very well on standard maps. Freesearch outperforms hard-coded approaches in odd maps where the predefined strategies do not work. And also we see that research strategy struggles in larger maps, 32 by 32 and beyond. And we saw that this idea that used by the strategy tactics entrant that com combining high level search with low level uh, Monte Carlo tree search search is actually very promising and results in a very robust bot. Even if I didn't present any timing results, well, something that was very interesting to me was that um, the PVAI and LED using machine learning, uh, it actually performed pretty well in scenarios where uh, it had been trained on. So it had been trained in the open map. So it performed very, very well in the open maps. And the advantage of this strategy is that it had not search time. This was a machine learning bot. So it actually played almost instantly, whereas all the other bots actually used all 100, 100 milliseconds per frame. So this means that this technique can actually be, that since there's extra time, it could be incorporated with other techniques, similar to uh, strategy tactics that combines puppet search with an iPhone CTS. We could conceive of integrating PVAI MLED with uh, other strategies that use the extra CPU time. So in summary, the winners for the standard track was a strategy tactics by Nicolas Barriga from University of Alberta, non-deterministic track also strategy tactics by Nicolas Barriga from University of Alberta, and in the partial observability track, uh, the best bot was one of the baseline bots, so I would say there's no winner for, no winner for this competition, for this track. Uh, for future competitions, uh, I would like to uh, repeat that all these year's entries are open source, so they can be used as benchmarks for future competitions. And I would like to know uh, your impression on whether this idea of having open and hidden maps is okay, if the competition format, this round robin tournament and the three tracks is okay, and if there's any future feature that we could add to micro RTS to make it more attractive and attract, uh, attract more entrants. So that's all I had to say. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any feedback, please uh, send me an email or just visit the competition forums. And uh, in the competition website, you can find these links and uh, all the replays of all the games of the competition and also a more in-depth analysis uh, in several spreadsheets of all the competition results can be found there. Thank you. So you are welcome to send questions. Any questions or comments you have to, to that email. So the, hello. so the next competition is Fighting Game AI competition uh, organized by my laboratory uh, with many members, most of them my students. And I'm Rock Tower Nash. Okay. So first, uh, I would like to do self-introduction of our laboratory. Uh, it's Intelligent Computer Entertainment Laboratory in Wisemekang University in Japan. And we belong to College of Information Science and Engineering and Graduate School and Isimekang Center for Game Research Studies. And what I would like to mention is that more than 30 of my former students are now working in major game companies. Uh, worth mentioning are uh, Capcom. Capcom, which you might know, is the publisher of Street Fighter. And Dims, I'm not sure if you know this company, but it's the company that actually is actually the developer of Street Fighter. So three of my our graduates are now working for Capcom and four are with Dims. And Fighting Eyes. So this is um, the platform that we have developed uh, for this competition uh, using game resources provided with courtesy 
from a dims uh, for the game called uh, rubber fish 2 i'm not sure if you are aware of this so this is a platform in java uh, and it's well, compared to other more complicated uh, competitions is be able to develop with a small group or even alone and from this year it was also wrapped for python so if you like you can develop a uh, fighting game ai in python and uh, it has been run since 2013 and from at cig cig from 2014 and like other competitions or source codes uh, of former ais not all most most of them are available on the website and our aims is um, we hope that this platform would uh, advance technique towards uh, what we call general fighting game AI, which is uh, a strong, which means it's a strong AI against any unseen opponents, uh, AIs or players, character types, uh, character data, uh, having different parameter settings, and play modes. I will be talking about play mode in a minute. Okay, some major features are shown here. So it's real time, so very limited response time, uh, basically 60 FPS. And one interesting feature is that latest game information provided by the system is intentionally, intentionally delayed by 15 frames. So we are trying to simulate uh, human response time in when playing games. And introduce for this year competition uh, as follows. First, so as I mentioned earlier, so the platform was wrapped for Python. So you, if you want, you can develop an AI in Python. And of course, some uh, sample Python AIs are also available, including a visual-based AI, uh, pretend with deep learning, uh, using Torch uh, platform. Uh, this paper on this schedule to be presented on Thursday, okay, in short paper session by a group of Sejong University. And we also, this year we have two modes, okay, play modes, one standard and the other one is speed running. For standard one, uh, the goal here is to win as many fights as possible in a real round robin tournament against another AI. And for speed running, uh, the goal is to beat our one particular AI, which is our sample MCTS AI, as fast as possible. So uh, before I go into details of uh, entries and results, I would like to show some examples of research using this platform. Uh, first is about difficulty adjustment. Uh, actually, there was work presented here this morning, uh, Monte Carlo research based algorithm for dynamic difficult, difficulty adjustment. Actually, at my group also, we used to do some work on this. So the goal is to find um, an AI that could adapt itself uh, accordingly to the player skill in order to uh, induce flow, what we call game flow, in, in order to get uh, the player uh, having, uh, getting immersed into the game, okay? And also, it's also related to believable agent, okay? So it must be believable uh, so that the player cannot detect if the player the AI is in, in intentionally losing uh, in order to adapt to the player skill. And another topic, uh, this a more popular topic is high performance AIs uh, to come up with uh, a strong AI, okay? Uh, actually, at CIT this year, there are two papers on this on Thursday. One already mentioned, uh, yeah, using DeepQ network for visual fighting game AI. 
And the other one is opponent modeling based on action table for MTTS based fighting game AI. Okay, both of them will be present. Is scheduled to be present on this Thursday. Okay. Another topic by my group is for health promotion. Okay, you might. It's quite hard to guess what I meant by this. It's like um, rather than using controller to go to control the game, here we use Kinect to control the game, and we are developing an AI that could. Uh, uh, promote the player's health by uh, making sure that the player will lose uh, calorie and making sure that uh, the player we have balance movement okay so it's a combination of opponent modeling by opponent is the, the player and so it, AI has to get okay if the AI do this action does it action then what actions the player will do, okay? And then this speed will calculate which action the AI should do in order to 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 keep well balanced movement by the player. And the last topic is uh, procedural play generation, also by my group, uh, is mainly targeting spectators, not players. Okay, so targeting a lot of games, but today I will be focusing on fighting game. Okay, this is a demo is like this. So you can specify um, the game situation, okay, winning situation by one of the character. In this demo is P1, player one. So this, now suppose that I, I wish that I want uh, player one to have this kind of scenario. So this one is losing in the beginning and making a win uh, later and then lose again. Okay, so I specify like that. I would like to watch a game play like that. And in this work, we use Monte Carlo three search to generate a gameplay that will follow this what we call play arc. So you can see this bar show the HP of each player, okay? So you can see that, uh, and the red dots there are actually uh, actual situations. And you can see, so now P1 is losing, right? And then it started to make a return a little bit. Not yet, not yet, this, you see this one. Okay, now it, it could, yeah, it's, it's winning again. And then it's dropping and going downwards. Okay, so we, this paper is scheduled to be presented in that conference in Europe. It was almost accepted here, okay, unfortunately. <laughs> But we, okay, at that time we couldn't make this demo. Okay, we only some abstract idea, and but we got a lot of nice comments by reviewers, so we incorporate their comments and try again to that conference. Fortunately, okay, contest rules. So um, there are three characters. Okay, Zen Garnet Lut for lot uh, is character data. Uh, was not available in advance, okay? So Zen Garnet, the character data were made available in advance. And for standard, okay, standard, I already mentioned about standard, so it's considered the winner of a while as the one with the HP above zero, okay? At the time when it, this opponent's uh, HP has reached zero, okay? And all AI's initial HP is set to 400. In speed running, speed running in this league, the winner is the one that that has the sorted average uh, killing time, so to speak. Okay, and for this, all a all entry AI's initial HP was set very high. Okay, 
to make sure that they will not die. Okay. But for the opponent AI, we use uh, our sample MCTS AI, whose initial SP was set to 300. Okay. You might have no idea about this speed runner, so I have a video clip showing you. So here on the left, P1 is the one of the entries, mm -hmm. and P2 on the right is the our sample MCTS AI. So you can see that they have uh, different uh, initial HPs. So ba basically, in order to win this play mode, you have to perform a kind of rush down playing style, cross range attack, and keep on uh, using punching, kicking, using uh, hadouken, projectiles. Okay, now now the P2 already died. Okay, summary of our fighters. It's delay, it's 15 frame delay. Okay, we have nine AIs from nine different locations, Algeria, Brazil, two entries, China, uh, Germany teaming with UK, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and USA, okay? Techniques, uh, four, four of them uh, use a combination of MCTS, Monte Carlo Tree Search, and Exploiting rules for limiting MCTS search space. Okay. Because uh, we have this game, we have 53 actions available, so it's almost uh, not possible to try all of them. So uh, participants come up with ideas to limit uh, search space by uh, limiting, by only providing MCTS a set of rules in advance according to situations. And two other AIs uh, use Q learning. Okay. One for switching is a kind of uh, meta AI. As mentioned in StarCraft competition. So so this one uh, used last year uh, top two AIs and one in the bottom and switch them accordingly, according to uh, value uh, calculated by value functions uh, using a kind of uh, epsilon greedy. Okay. And the other AI, um, Q learning AI use perceptron uh, a neural network as a function approximator for decision making. And one AI using STN with also I heard that in real time, as uh, in StarCraft competition, uh, there was also one entry using HTN. Okay, this one also using HTN, hierarchical task network planner for making decision, and this one using uh, simulation, uh, which is a uh, forward model uh, provided for doing in using in uh, our MCTS AI, but it's. This one is not using MCTS. It uses its own simulation for making decision. Okay, try a combination of actions and use simulation to select the best action. And the last one just use is a rule-based AI. Okay, uh, reactive AI. Results. Okay, so the list that will be shown uh, are in alphabetical order. So you have to check the color. So first is in orange, second is in blue, and third in green. Okay. First is the list of standard lead point. Uh, the standard point, points by points we use. Um, so for each character, so there are for each play mode there are three characters. So and then we rank according to the number of wins, and then. These points are calculated according to F1 scoring system, F1 scoring system. And you see, for standard uh, league point, uh, the winner is the one with the highest points for Zen and Garnet is Mutakeng, okay? And, the, the, and you can see the colors. And for Lot, uh, the winner is Mokaku Mono. Here's for the speed running, speed running. Uh, the winner 
for Zen and Garnet is Kika Thunder. And the winner for Lux is Fu Ai. Please recall that Lux uh, for Lux is character data was not made available in advance. Okay, and then we combine, we just sum up the points in order to de determine the winner, runner up, and the third uh, position of this competition. And here are the results. So the winner is Kika Thunder, and the second place is Fu AI, and the third place is JBot. Okay, JBot. Uh, 2017. And now let's have a look at Mutaken P1 against Kika Thunder. Kika Thunder is the, the winner of the competition, but Mutaken is the winner of these two characters. And this video clip is uh, the fight uh, using Zen character where Mutaken is the winner, okay? And you can see how they fight. So Mutaken, even though it's uh, overall ranking is fourth, it's a very well balanced defensive offensive. P1, okay, P1 now is on. For what we call, or what uh, fighting game players call, uh, rush down both games. P1, uh, can offer is good at guarding, but. However, it, you can see that Muta Gang is well balanced, but because it's not that offensive, so it takes time to beat our sample MCTSAI in this, in this mode. That's why it, okay, Muta Gang didn't do well uh, in this mode, unfortunately. Okay, let's have a look at Kika Thunder uh, playing against our sample MCTSAI uh, using uh, Garnet character type in uh, speed running mode. You see, basically, P1, uh, Kika Thunder goes in and that sometimes it also uses a token. A token token. Okay, here is uh, final rank. Uh, we also e we include that uh, our sample MCTSAI, so the final ranking is here. And okay, let's have a look at uh, each top rank AI uh, description. So the winner, Kika Thunder uh, by Eta Aoki, congratulations. He also, he was the winner last year, okay. A uh, young professional uh, graduated uh, in 2013, okay? And he's, he's using MCTS, which limits the speech based, based on a set of rules for each of the six combinations. So we have three characters and two modes. The second, full AI uh, by use of is male Sheriffy, uh, his PhD student is in still the Jenny Electric at 
electronic Algeria. Okay. Also using MCTS, which modify from Thunder 01, uh, which was last year winner. Okay. And the third place, okay, there's a paper and presentation on Thursday. So if you are interested uh, on this AI, uh, you are welcome to listen to his talk. Um, Man Jae Kim, who is student, and Kung Jong Kim, who is professor at Sejong University, uh, Korea. This AI is using MCTS with also limited, limiting search page based on what they call action table. Okay, so in summary, MCTS is still dominant this year, actually since last year. However, uh, Mokaku Mono, okay, I will have to go back here a bit. You see the winner in Standard League uh, using LUT collector, LUT collector with this team. So LUT collector data was make available in advance, but this team win. Uh, actually, for LUT, uh, we provide 10 games uh, as an opportun oppon opportunity for each AI to train itself against LUT, okay? Because it, we what uh, its character data wasn't make available in advance, so we provide op opportunity to train. And Mokaku Mono, which use Q learning, okay, Q learning, uh, and neural network as function approximator one in standard LUT. So which implies that okay, if we for unknown character, even though MCTS is still dominant mm, for unknown, unseen character, Q learning is still a promising technique. So our reflections, first, no entry in Python, unfortunately, okay. And no entry using deep learning. We got a complaint, some complaints from prospective uh, participant that it took time, so much time to train. Uh, so I really would like to discuss with <laughs> this uh, organizer about this a little bit. We got, we got s some complaints about training time using deep learning. So that's why they, they gave up or oh, switched to MCTS. And then, okay, we only have three papers uh, using this platform here. It could have been four, but unfortunately, my paper was not accepted, okay? And plan for next year competition. So this year, we uh, declare in advance that the, the opponent AI for speed learning would be our MCTS AI. We plan not to review this next year and till now uh, two of the three the character data were made available in advance next year we plan to review only one okay in in order to promote more use of Q learning or more advanced technique learning techniques and there's still some issues in balance of characters like jumping too much. Uh, there are some skills that uh, having too much advantage. So we plan to adjust uh, parameters for next year. Thank you. Yes. Just 
go downstairs and you can explore the plant and see purple kind of flow of water and you can just stand and sit on the top of the line but if you want to go to the south you can have line and have space to do it but if you just want to go on up you can uh, find the seat and go back down and see the statue 550 so we have only 30 minutes left for two competitions well uh, the session was ending at 5 Right? No, it's like a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, we try our best. We try our best. So only only one question. You have? Uh, but also it's not that bad for, for as far as full AI is concerned, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's doing well, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, not, it's not that bad here, but I mean, so it's a kind of balance between the system and the Okay, we are running out of time, so if you don't mind, I would like to go to go on to the next competition. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's almost perfect timing. So the next uh, competition is geometry. Friends Cooperative Game AI Competition organized by Ru Prada, Francisco Mel and Melo Jobias. However, they couldn't come, so today this competition will be presented by Pedro Santos on behalf of the organizer. Thank you.
Okay, so good afternoon. Um, as the, the chair already informed, so this competition is organized by Rufrada, Francisco Melo, and João Dias, but they uh, could not be present. Rui was father just recently, and so they asked me to, to present the results. So I'll do the best job I can. Uh, so, uh, first, a little bit about uh, the Geometry Frames competition. Um, it's uh, a very simple game uh, where there are two players, which is, one is the circle. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a video playing. Okay, so the video does not play. I don't understand why. Uh, maybe here. No, but okay. I can. So it will be faster that way. Uh, so basically, you have two players. Um, you have a circle and uh, this um, rectangle. So the yellow circle and the green rectangle. And uh, they have to catch these uh, uh, Los Angeles, so these uh, purple stars. And uh, there are uh, three types of platforms. Uh, so the, this is the, uh, the actions they can do. Uh, they can, uh, the, they have, uh, this is symmetric play, so the, um, the circle can roll and jump. And the, um, the rectangle can change form and uh, actually, it can fall because uh, uh, because of the physics. Um, so the the world uh, it's a two D world with the physics, and the physics which uh, exist there are uh, attraction and gravity, and uh, of course collision, which take into account the mass. So the, the for instance the yellow circle when it can um, has some mass and if it bumps against the, the rectangle it will make some effect. So the platforms are black which nobody can pass through or uh, one of the colors and the, the, the yellow circle can pass through the yellow uh, platforms and the green uh, rectangle through the green platforms. And there is this set of uh, uh, collective, uh, collectibles diamonds. Uh, so the goal uh, is to collect uh, all the diamonds in the least amount of time and there are uh, several uh, possible um, levels that you can uh, make, some examples are here. So the framework for the artificial intelligence, uh, you have uh, as access to the sensors which detect the platforms, the collectibles, the characters and uh, other level info and uh, you can uh, use actuators which uh, uh, are one-off switches and which allow the circle and the rectangle to do those uh, actions that you can see and you can of course uh, communicate. Um, you can also uh, accelerate and do some uh, simulation. Okay, so the idea uh, of the challenges um, is uh, basically to uh, co co uh, in collaboration between the circle and the rectangle to try to catch all uh, the collectibles and do a, co a joint plan. Um, and uh, do, uh, of course, everything in uh, real time. The competition has to three, three uh, tracks. Uh, one uh, is the, the cooperation between the, the two agents and then there are two tracks with which are single player uh, one for the rectangle and one for circle uh, each track includes uh, 10 levels five of which are known beforehand and five uh, which are not uh, known um, so these are some of the, the public levels of the cooperative track uh, with the circle and the rectangle. Then here are the levels of the circle track. And 
here the levels of the uh, rectangle uh, tracks. Um, so the scoring, um, you get a score for each diamond and you have a bonus of time for solving uh, the level which is, has to do with the time that remains. Uh, the scoring formula is over there where uh, V is the number of um, collected um, uh, diamonds. Uh, um, I'm sorry, V is the punctuation for each collected diamond, N is the number of collected diamonds, and this V completed is the bonus uh, for uh, completing uh, the level. Uh, the if this is then over five runs, and there is then the, the average uh, computed. Uh, regarding this year uh, of the competition, so in terms of submission, there was uh, no submission on the, um, the collective, uh, uh, the, on the cooperation tracks, unfortunately. Uh, it's, there, are s uh, there was one uh, uh, almost submission, but in the end it was not working properly and it, it, it was uh, postponed, maybe for next year. Uh, we had uh, four submissions on the circle tracks and uh, one submission on the rectangle uh, tracks. So uh, the kit agent is from the Kyoto Institute of Technology and then we have a supervised uh, agent and uh, we have um, uh, the RTT, it's uh, ra rapidly exploring random trees um, and then we have a neural reinforcement learning agent. Um, so these are the approaches uh, of the, the different uh, submissions um, for the circle track, neural networks and reinforcement learning, uh, deep learning and uh, supervised learning and then we had the rap rapidly exploring random trees and uh, search plus reinforcement learning. Um, on the rectangle track we have just a single submission which used rapidly exploring the random tree. Uh, so here are uh, the scores. So uh, you have there the uh, average diamonds collected on the five runs. Uh, and uh, on the other column, the, uh, the time uh, which was uh, used to collect it, and then the score. So this is for uh, the kit uh, bot. Then the, the same results for the SCA bot. You can see a, a lower uh, performance. Uh, in many cases, it did not finish collecting the, the number of uh, stars, which are in parentheses of the level. And the RRT scores. And finally, uh, the NRL scores. So we, if we put them uh, all together, it may be easier to see. Um, graph, uh, you can see that the kit uh, uh, performed in, in generally better than any other of the bots in the circle track uh, with um, sometimes the uh, NRL also and the um, RRT getting good results mainly in one or two scenarios. Okay, so I, ha I would have here some um, videos which I would like to show at least one so you can if let's see this is windows mysteries just a moment let me try to check something here Automatically is not working. Maybe. Oops. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's try. If it's working. 
Well, it works here, but let it print. Do you see like that? It's okay. I usually work with a Mac, so this is my first time bringing a PC to a conference. So. Okay, so this is an, uh, an example. And Did you? Yeah. No. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot that. Yeah. Because it also does not show in my screen. This is. So. Okay. Thank you. We are seeing successful runs of the first one. So these are the uh, examples of the um, the circle. So the, the for the single um, bot uh, to to play the the rectangle, these are uh, the scores uh, he obtained, not uh, bad scores, and I have also um, a video. You can notice there are some excitations uh, in the middle. He does not know what to do. Yeah, he can do so and then he detects. You can see how the, the, the rectangle can move and fold, which is the technique to, to do some of the things. Okay. So let's go. Okay, uh, so the final classification is uh, shown now. Uh, Kit uh, won the, the circle uh, competition. Um, the percentage that you see are the, over the total number of uh, diamonds uh, th that were possible to collect, how many were collected. So you can see that uh, Kit uh, got a, a good uh, grade with uh, 97, almost uh, percent. And uh, uh, of course, uh, then RRT, NRL, and then SCA. And in the rectangle track, there is only a single entry, and it got 81.6%. Uh, uh, so uh, the um, conclusion uh, is that. Um, Geometry Friends is a good test bed for cooperative artificial intelligence, uh, but unfortunately, uh, people did not submit yet to it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the game is very easy to understand. Uh, there is not so many actions, but it's very hard to uh, master. 
um, because uh, the, the the plans can get very complicated. And if even if you play the game as uh, a player, a human player, you can understand that a lot of communication between the two players is needed so that the joint plan can be uh, agreed to and uh, executed. And it's not uh, sometimes not obvious how to coordinate between the circle and the, um, the rectangle. So for uh, AI, it seems to be uh, even uh, more uh, difficult. So there is still a lot uh, to solve. And uh, our vision here uh, is uh, to use it also to, to, to test uh, human and agent interaction. It's, we are still not there. Um, but uh, it's one uh, the vision for uh, this uh, um, project. And uh, of course, we need uh, more submissions on the collaboration track. So thank you very much. And we are looking forward uh, to your uh, submissions. Thank you. Yes, uh, you can ask Sandy. I, I not no, I don't know the technical details, uh, but uh, you can send directly uh, to uh, uh, Louis and uh, the others there. Okay, thank you very much. What? Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Scott, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Showdown AI competition. Um, now, by Showdown, I talk about Pokemon Showdown, which is an online hmm? oh, which is an online site on which people uh, battle Pokemon. The format of this competition uses Generation Six Pokemon. For those of you um, who are familiar, that's X, Y, Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. And in order to do this, we decided to have each AI play 15 rounds of six games each. A game consists of both players given a team of six random Pokemon and battling against each other. A game is considered one when all of the Pokemon of one side or the other has fainted. Now, in order to maintain fairness, each of these six game rounds uh, have their teams flipped um, every three games. So halfway through, uh, but player A will get player B's team, and player B will get player A's team. In this way, we can ensure that if uh, one of the randomly generated teams is significantly better than the other, then uh, it will essentially become a draw at the end of a six-game round. So for our competition, we ended up getting three competitors this year, the production rule agents, a Minimax tree search agent, and a bowl, something called the bowl agents. The production rule agent uh, is essentially a pretty standard rule-based agent. It has a hierarchy of rules that it follows through in order to make decisions. The Minimax tree search agent is a modified version of, Minimax, of the Minimax algorithm. It seems to make use of move ordering in order to aggressively prune out bad choices before operating through the full Minimax algorithm. The bowl agent seems to be a pretty standard Minimax type agent, although it has a heavily modified evaluation function to save on certain costs and to better return um, choices given the hidden information in the game. So I want to talk a little bit about the results um, and a bit of discussion on uh, what this tells us about the game. So we also included the a one-turn look-ahead agent within the competitors just to give us kind of a baseline for how these agents perform. The one-turn look-ahead agent looks at all of the possible moves it can make and finds the highest damaging one. If it has to switch Pokemon to make this move, then it will do so. Now, what we can see here is that the production rule agent and the Minimax tree search agent actually perform much, much better than the bowl and OTL agent. To read this graph, what you do is uh, you look at the row here, 
And the number outside the parentheses is the number of rounds it won against the column agent. And the number within the parentheses is the number of games. So the Minimax tree search agents won six rounds or 50 games against the production rule agent. Does that make sense? And what ends up, what we can see here is that the bowl and the one turn look ahead agents fall very close to each other while the production rule agents and the Minimax tree search agents fall very close to each other with the Minimax tree search agent inching slightly ahead and just enough to be statistically significant, although not by much. And uh, that's pretty much what you can see there. And uh, a lot of things I think uh, were learned in the first iteration of the showdown competition. The framework was written in Node.js and adapted from the source code of Pokemon Showdown. Importantly, the source code of Pokemon Showdown isn't exactly optimized for high-speed simulations or to be run many, many, many times within a second. Uh, in or in because of this, uh, for future iterations of the competition, we want to optimize the engine to be able to much better handle the needs of tree search agents, which do simulate for very often for things like rollouts and uh, node expansion. Uh, from perspective uh, competitors, we got a lot of feedback saying that the framework wasn't all that friendly for machine learning algorithms. And I feel that machine learning might be a very strong competitor for a game like Pokemon in which stochasticity and hidden information are very prevalent. Uh, these are details I will be going over more in the paper talk on Friday for those of you who might be interested. Um, also, over the years, Pokemon has introduced a large number of uh, changes to the way battles work. Um, for those of you familiar, in the third generation of Pokemon, they added a format in which two Pokemon battle on each team at the same time, and that adds a lot of strategic depth to the game, and I'd be interested in adding an additional track to allow for that. Additionally, because this competition has only randomly generated teams, it sort of uh, limits the possibility of strategic depth for the agents. And so I think that a team building uh, track, analogous to maybe a deck building competition, might be appropriate for a game like Pokemon. Um, sorry, this is going very fast. I'm trying to fit this within the 10 minutes. Yes, I do think in Twitch. Five minutes, okay. Wow. Okay, so now is the end of our session. I would like to thank the audience, um, organizers of the comp uh, competitions today, and all participants to, to the competitions. Thank you.